um, today it's going to be another kind of how-to video and another kind of uh, product review um, so let's dive into it here so basically what I'm going to go over today I've gotten a lot of comments and questions about this particular model I did um, still got a few finishing touches on it yet, but um, the biggest question is the, this scale pattern this stencil type of type of work that I did kind of basically where where and how do you do that um, it's it's actually quite simple really. um, like I said before a stencil um, not one I made I, I definitely purchased these um, I'll show you here they, they come like this um, this just kind of shows you the pattern and the actual stencil itself can't really see them once you pull them off um, then you'll see the actual pattern they are a little bit of a pain to get off because each like scale section here you have to actually punch out each individual one um, but I mean once you get it done it's it definitely helps a lot and it's, it's a great asset to have um, so these stencils this is a large one a large scale pattern that I also got a medium one. I think they have another smaller one. Um, my idea though for my Salamander Army, I'm just planning on using the large one for vehicles and then I'll probably use this one on maybe like some somewhat larger units. I mean the only one I can really think of right now is probably that on my Centurions. I will probably use it on some of their armor. <clears throat> they do make another one that's a bit smaller and then it just kind of gets a little really kind of blotched. Look into me the smaller you get than that. So, but the company that makes this is Anarchy Models. Um, it's a company out of the UK. Their website's anarchymodels.co.uk. Um, and I'll have a link to that down in the description. And price point, I can't remember the exact price. It was in, uh, I think it was in Euro. Um, but it wasn't too bad uh, for what you get. Um, I guess I got, I actually got two of the large stencils and then uh, one of the small. Uh, with today's project, I, I was able to pick up a couple of um, drop pods so I can add them to my Salamander Army. Um, somebody was trying to get rid of them for cheap. I guess they had them for a Raven Guard and they didn't want them anymore. Um, and you can kind of tell like they, they didn't really put together too well. Cause if you're familiar with the drop pod, and if not, you are. Here's a little tip. Um, as you see, the doors don't close all the way, and that's usually because you have to kind of shave a little bit off on the door here. Um, I'm trying to get in here and show you. It doesn't quite seat right here. It's got too much um, touching in there. So you kind of got to take like an exacto knife and just kind of get like, get in here and shave a bit off. Of course, this is a lot easier to do um, before you put the model together but it's not impossible to do um, once it is. Just a quick little shave on that side. I'm gonna try this other side. Okay. Yeah. It needs a little bit more shaving, but I mean, I, you can already tell it's, it's But yeah, so the plan is I'm going to um, repaint these. I'm going to try to magnetize the doors um, and get them to sit more flush. And then um, paint it and maybe I'm going to do a little bit of a scale pattern on the, uh, the doors and show you how I use the, the, um, the stencils. So let me finish this up real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I kind of cleaned up the drop pod quite a bit, as you can see. Um, the door is now all fully closed and I've already went ahead and primed it. Um, for my salamanders, especially with the scale pattern, what I like to do is I'll prime it in the black, but then I'll go over it with the, the Dark Angels green, or the, uh, I think it's Caliban green now. Um, and that's just, 
when you do the scale, so there's a little bit of a contrast green color to it. There's a little bit darker in between the scales. I just think it looks better. Um, but yeah, and I went ahead and magnetized the doors. Um, I have like this little magnet in here, and then I put the larger magnet here. I like the larger magnet um, as it just helps secure better than putting two small magnets or two large magnets can often make it a bit harder to open. Normally when I do drop pods, I'll, I'll usually put the other magnet here like this. Um, I've tried in the past trying to drill and put them like inside underneath this piece and it's just never really worked out the greatest. It just weakens the magnet too much having that much plastic in between here and having the other magnet inside the door here. Um, I have an example of my Dark Angel drop pod that I've done um, and it has the, uh, the magnet inside of here so you can't even you can't even tell it's there of course you got this up here it's kind of painted so you can't really I mean, you can tell you can see it but I don't think it does really subtract from the model at all but as you can see it just snaps closed which is nice it's just something I like that it teaches on I like to be able to open it and have it closed and secure so all right, so as far as this here, I've already cut off a bit of the stencil and I mean, it, it doesn't come like this. It's got some paint on it because I used it on a previous project. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open the door here. And for this, I've decided I'm just going to just paint this panel here on the door. And then I'm gonna do some other things with the other parts of the fins and the door and such. Um, so I'm just going to apply my stencil to the actual door. And these stencils are pretty great as far as multiple use. Um, I've already used this one quite a few times. Um, I used this same one on my Imperial Knight that I did. And I've used it on a few tanks and stuff already. And it's still got really good um, adhesion to the, the model. The, the glue or whatever it is, I'm not really sure what they use, but it it's, it's, goes pretty well. So I applied it to the door and then I closed the door and kind of then have to kind of re kind of push it down in there and get it in there. Now some people, I mean, they might say, oh, just tape it off, get a, an airbrush or um, some kind of brush of that kind, like an aerosol or something. Um, they don't make the this color green and like. The, um, the, at least the GW doesn't make it in the uh, spray can yet, but I know I think Army Painter might and a few other companies, but anyway, I, I think for this type of work, um, it's, just, it's just easier not to because you know, like you see, you'd be taping off a lot of stuff and then if you get open, if you get too much, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so anyway, so I'm going to get out the uh, Warpstone Glow, which used to be snot green. From there. So what I'm going to use is this dry brush. Um, it has with a really short brush on it. I didn't really clean it too well since the last time I used it. And that's essentially what you're going to do. You're going you're gonna to pretty much kind of dry brush it on a little bit. Maybe you'll a little bit thicker. Um, but essentially, that's kind of the same idea. Um, so you got each one of these, and I'm just gonna kind of maybe dab a little bit off, and then I'm just gonna go into each scale, and just kind of fill it in. And you know, there's kind of one, and just keep doing that, and kind of going over them again, getting the color a little bit darker, a little bit thicker. keep going over now I wouldn't ever suggest painting like this um, with strokes or anything like that just go to each individual one and dab it in there and I don't know if you're familiar if anyone's familiar with Bob Ross and his joy of painting show I was reminded when I do these of the dabbing but a happy little tree happy little tree maybe there's a squirrel that lives here <laughs> But anyway, yeah, so just keep dabbing them in there and just kind of work your way to each scale. And 
eventually you'll get all of them in there nice and evenly. I mean, that, you can kind of just blotch them. It gives it kind of a better, uh, more natural kind of look if they're not all identical. Um, it gives it some depth to them as well. Um, and so the stencils on the Anarchy models, they have other products as well, but these are their, they call it the HD stencil system. Um, so on, I saw the link below. Um, they have all different types of patterns. They have scales, different types of camouflage patterns you can use. They have like a hexagon type of camouflage pattern thing that you can do for if you want to do some kind of a, a futuristic thing. They have uh, their camouflage. They have examples of uh, various town models with the, the hexagon camouflage on it. It looks pretty neat. I might try that maybe for my towel. But right now I thought I would get the scales because my main army has the salamanders and you know, I want to get get them looking good. So I'm going to finish up this and I'll be back to show you the finished product. Okay, I'm back. I um, just finished up the last panel here so I'm going to just peel it off and give it a shave. How it looks. Just peel it right off. There you have it. I think it turns out pretty well. So I've got the nice little scale pattern. Um, still got a bit more I'm going to do to the fins and everything else, but that's kind of just the basics of the, um, the stencil. Um, pretty simple. I think most people kind of know how to use a stencil. It seems common sense, but. Um, just give you an idea of how it works and how these are. Um... Hey everyone, it's Tech again. Um, today I'm going to show the same stencil as in the last one, but this time I'm going to use the, an airbrush. Um, in the uh, previous video I had mentioned how it's a bit easier to use the dry brush or just the brush technique. Um, and now I'm going to do the, the airbrush and kind of show you there is some benefit to it as it, it's a lot faster. But you just got to do it. Uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of technique to it. Let's just say that. it's um, You got to be slower. Um, and when you put the stencil on, as I've already got it on here. And, and, and the key thing to do with this stencil is you got to make sure that I mean it's pressed down. It's not going anywhere. Like right here, I've got like a little bubble that I can't seem to get to stick down. Because anything where it's, it's up a little bit or anything like that, I mean... It'll get right in there, and you can maybe go back through with a touch, with like a little detail brush or something, and kind of fill in the in between later. Um, but it's just a lot easier not to have to do that. Um, so um, for the airbrush, I just I don't have anything too fancy. I just have it's, uh, it's the Badger Patriot 105, um, and it's basically like this right here. Uh, it's pretty much your standard standard airbrush. Um, I mean, it works pretty well. It's mostly um, I use it for kind of doing a lot of the base coats and stuff like that. Um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not, I'm not. I'm pretty new to the airbrush scene as it is. I haven't gotten too much into trying to do any more of the details and stuff like that with it. Um, I'm gradually getting there, but uh, as of right now, I just kind of use it. For um, base coats and stuff, um, and as far as the paints, um, this is just your GW paint that I use, um, but it's mixed with some blue stuff here. <laughs> this is like your Windex. This is like an off-brand of Windex, um, just window cleaner. It works great. It doesn't mess up with the pigment, even though it's a blue color, um, but it, it does great at thinning the paint. And it has, I guess it's the ammonia or something like that that's in the paint that really helps thin it. And as far as consistency, you can kind of see the consistency here. Um, when you kind of roll it around the edge, you want it to really kind of slide down like that. So you, you want it to be a pretty, pretty good consistency. Not too thick, but enough that it clings to the sides because that tells you that it's going to cling to the model when you paint it. All right, I'm going to fill up the... Uh, airbrush here and then we'll start painting. Okay, I got the brush all filled up here and 
and turn on the compressor and we're going to get started here. Okay, and there you have that. Um, we'll let that dry a little bit. Um, and then we'll take it off and see how it turned out. Hopefully it turned out all right. Um, like I said, it's kind of tricky with the airbrush, uh, making sure that you get a good, good even, uh, good even coat and the, with the, uh, the stencil especially trying to make sure that it doesn't get uh, in between the stencil itself um, but yeah I mean we got pretty good coverage on it not too bad um, so I'm just hoping when I take this off it's going to look alright so we'll just give it a few more minutes and we'll be right back alright well there you have it it actually didn't turn out too bad at all Looks pretty good um, and then it'll look a little bit better because I'll, I'll paint this probably you know a different kind of color and kind of really border this out so it looks nice and everything and then I'll fill in the rest of the model as well with some of the patterns and it should I think it'll actually turn out pretty nice I'm a little, a little impressed with it um, here's kind of a side-by-side -side to the one we did earlier um, you can kind of see for the most part, they generally look kind of the same. I would say that you definitely have a more even color with the airbrush throughout the different scales. As this one, you can see each scale is very different um, with the uniqueness and stuff, but you can definitely see that there's more of a, a consistency here. Um, but they both look great. I'm, I'm very happy with the way both of them turned out. Um, so. Like I said, I'm pretty new to the airbrush thing. Um, as I make more videos and stuff, I'll be learning along with anybody else who might be learning how to airbrush. Or if you know some good tips on airbrushing, please leave them in the comments below because I'd greatly appreciate any help. Um, I don't know, one day maybe I'll be uh, down to making portraits and pictures and stuff, but for now I think I'm going to be stuck to the just basing the models and I guess I can do some stencil work now as well. Um, but yeah, again, I'm you know happy to share my tips and happy to hear any tips anyone else has. All right, well until next time, thanks.